So we're going to talk about operations management now. Here are the 10 key decision areas for an operations manager. The first is the design of the product. And the product could either be a good or a service. And there's two types of goods. There's a durable good and what's called a non-durable good. I know, very creative, right? Durable and non-durable. Generally, the non-durable good is referred to as a consumable, such as food or beverages or shampoo, hand cream, cocoa butter, right? Those are considered to be consumables. So we need to design the product or the service. We have to manage the quality. So we got to consider developing a process. We're going to look at statistical process control to manage the upper and lower limits for the process so we know when the process goes out of control. We're going to look at the capacity of the process. We're going to need to consider the location. So for example, where are we going to operate our business? The layout, human resource issues, supply chain, inventory, scheduling, and maintenance. All right, so let's talk about each one of those briefly. Design of goods and services. Remember, the way we're, de we're defining a product here is that it includes both goods and services. Services are intangible. So if we think about the degree of tangibility, it's on a continuum from durable, which is very tangible, to consumable, to a service, which is intangible. So we need to decide what is the product that we're going to offer and how should that product be designed. Is it going to have 20 gigabytes? Is it going to have an LCD screen? What are the features that the product is going to have? Is it going to have MP3 technology and text capability? Or is it going to have MP3 technology and calling capability? These are things that we need to decide. When we think about quality, we need to determine what good quality means in this particular category. So we need to define when we're doing quality inspections, whether or not it's okay for there to be a scratch in a metal bakeware dish, or a scuff mark. Is that okay? In some instances, that could be okay, in others, not. But we need to decide what it means to be good quality. What does it mean, for example, when you think about reliability and cars? You put the key in the engine and it's reliable if it starts seven out of ten times of that you try to stop the car? Is that good quality? Or does it need to start every time? We need to look at the process by which the product is manufactured. So is it going to be on an assembly line? Is it going to be as part of a job cell? So it's a job cell, for example, means that there's a group of people and machines 
that are responsible for completing certain tasks. Like, so let's say we're making shoes, for example. You have one person that's responsible for cutting the leather. You have another person that's responsible for punching holes in the leather. You have another person who's responsible for stitching the leather to the soles. You have another person that's responsible for polishing the shoes. In that case, we have job specialization. So that job cell produces the entire product. And very often the people on the team are cross-trained. So they engage in job rotation. So sometimes they're punching the hole in the leather, sometimes they're polishing the shoes, sometimes they're stitching the shoes. Why? Because it, become, it becomes very monotonous. Right? You're, now, at some point you reach a certain level of efficiency. You're punching holes in leather all day. But at some point, after doing that for hours and hours, days and days, you punch a hole in your finger because there's only so long that you could do that. So jobs that are well designed, that have task significance, that have task identity, that they're gonna have a high level of job satisfaction, will use different skills. So you'll rotate into the different jobs, into the different positions, and complete different tasks. So that's something that we need to decide. The location strategy has to do with where is our manufacturing facility going to be located? Now this is actually really important because remember when we're manufacturing a product, we're going to need raw materials, we're going to need component parts, so the location has got to be relative to what? For example, relative to our suppliers. So that's a very important decision. How far, right, we don't have a manufacturing facility at this point, or we're building a new one, how far is it going to be from our plastic supplier? Or the company that we buy 10 million bolts from? Because, for example, outsourcing, right? A lot of outsourcing is done uh, from Asia. Why? Because the labor cost is very low. In China, there's many laborers that are working for 30 cents an hour. In Detroit, people who tighten bolts on the assembly line are getting $30 an hour. You can't close that gap. There's no union rollback or concession that's going to close that gap. So companies manufacture products in markets like China, for example. But that's not the end of the story. Because another important operations management concept is what's called JIT, J-I-T, which is just in time. Nobody wants to hold inventory. If you have inventory, you're tying up working capital. You're tying up cash. So JIT says that if you're the Hard Rock Cafe, that at 8 o'clock in the morning, you pick up the phone and you order 5,000 pounds of chicken. And by 1 o'clock that day, the chicken is in your kitchen. That's the concept of just-in-time delivery. Now, that being said, now sophisticated companies operate that way. That being said, consider the issue in sourcing from China. There's certain trade-offs that you need to consider. On the one hand, the labor rate is dramatically less, but the product, to ship the product from China to the West Coast takes 30 days, 30 to 45 days. 